I would like to indicate though that uh, across the whole of Greater Sydney it would make a lot of sense for people to be wearing masks at the present time. Uh, Greater Sydney uh, includes uh, obviously the Sydney CBD, uh, the Illawarra, Shoalhaven, the Central Coast and of course the Nepean Blue Mountains. Today, confusion grows over the true definition of Greater Sydney, leaving hundreds of thousands of people clueless about what restrictions and border closures apply to them. In a minute, we'll be crossing to Jack Hahn, who is in Greater Sydney, or is he? Also today, the inquiry into Victoria's bungled hotel quarantine system hands down its final report, but has not been able to determine who commissioned the use of private security. Details coming up. And we are just two days out from Santa's arrival, but for the tens of thousands of Australians who remain stranded overseas, Christmas will only be a reminder of what they're missing. Our special report coming up. And a very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us for the very first AM edition of the Six News. We have a lot to get through today, obviously, all those top stories. Plus, we'll be chatting with Christian Remmer to chat all things politics. First, though, to our top story, and confusion is growing surrounding the true definition of Greater Sydney, leaving hundreds of thousands of people clueless about what restrictions and border closures apply to them. Let's go straight to our chief reporter, Jack Hunt, who's technically in Greater Sydney, but Jack, you look nowhere near a city. Yeah, that's right, Leo. Look around. Maybe you might be able to see the Centrepoint Tower off in the distance or you'll hear the bustlings of a greater Sydney region. Well, no, you can only hear interstate trucks on the Princess Highway behind me and you can see where I am. It doesn't look like greater Sydney, but according to some governments and some departments within New South Wales, this is Greater Sydney. It has many people confused. It all stems back to the beginning of the week when Gladys Berejiklian released her new public health measures. And in those measures, she said the Illawarra and the Shoalhaven are technically included in the Greater Sydney region, which had many people confused because for a very long time, the New South Wales government has not seen these districts as Greater Sydney for good reason, because the bottom of Shoalhaven it's about a four and a half hour drive to the centre of Sydney from the bottom of the Shoalhaven from where I am in Shoal Harbour here. That's about a two hour drive to Sydney or definitely a two hour train ride. So that had many people confused because this new definition of Greater Sydney was released and other New South Wales government departments had not even seen us as Greater Sydney. New South Wales Health originally did not see us as Greater Sydney because we are in a different health district. We're in a rural health district, the Illawarra and the Shoalhaven Health District. The New South Wales Police Force, another part of the New South Wales government that did not see us as the Greater Sydney region. We actually are zoned as the southern region of New South Wales, which extends from Helensburg right down to Eden. And when that definition was given that Wollongong and Shoal Harbour was part of Greater Sydney, well, of course, that put around 300,000 people into a state of flux because their travel plans were put on hold, businesses had to adopt new social distancing measures. This definition has a lot riding on it, but we have since learned that Gladys Berejiklian has once again changed the definition. Wollongong is now included in the public health orders as Greater Sydney, but the Shoal Harbour local government area about 10, 15 minutes south where I am is not included in the Greater Sydney region. But to make matters even more confusing, Leo, the New South Wales government obviously has a number of different definitions of Greater Sydney and other state governments have different definitions of Greater Sydney too. If you go up to Queensland, they see the Shoalhaven, the Illawarra and Shoal Harbour where I am as Greater Sydney. So uh, the border is banned for people wanting to go there. And of course, you know, this is just such a minute thing, a definition, a word, but these words have a lot riding on it. 300,000 people here are wanting to know what will they do for Christmas? Will they be restricted to house gatherings? Will they be able to see loved ones on the other side of different states in you know, Queensland or the ACT or the Northern Territory? So it's very confusing. What do we know at this point? Well, at the very moment, Gladys Berejiklian is saying that for this uh, nuanced definition of Greater Sydney, which doesn't follow any of her other departments, that Wollongong is part of Greater Sydney, but Shoal Harbour isn't. But what we do know is other state governments, Queensland and the Northern Territory, do see the Illawarra, Shoal Harbour and Shoal Haven as Greater Sydney, which means uh, border restrictions for them. The best advice, Leo, is look it up, give it a call, but I think definitely a lot of confusion. 
Right, Jack, thank you. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister has said that swift action is needed to contain this latest outbreak. Scott Morrison saying that restrictions announced by the state leaders have been necessary and he's hopeful that New South Wales will soon return to a COVID normal. Take a look at this. If you're from that affected area in the Avalon outbreak in the northern beaches of Sydney, if you were there over the past fortnight um, and you happen to be somewhere else now, if you're in Adelaide, if you're in Queensland, if you're indeed here in the ACT or somewhere else, then the rules about isolation apply equally to you as they do uh, to those of your neighbours who are back in Avalon and the Northern Beaches right now. And I think that's a very important point. And I, we, we seek people's uh, cooperation. We do understand that New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian will be speaking in just under an hour to provide a daily update on case numbers and deciding whether restrictions will continue past midnight tonight. We'll bring that to you right here on 6 News. The inquiry into Victoria's bungled hotel quarantine system has released its final report and has not been able to determine who commissioned the use of private security. It also found that the DJPR should not have been responsible for contract management throughout the program and that the DHHS was instead the appropriate body to manage that. Reporter Lincoln Holmes has more. On Monday, the hotel quarantine inquiry report was handed down. I want to apologise to the Victorian community for the very clear errors that were made in this program. Uncovering what the Victorian government did wrong in handling the COVID-19 crisis with hotel quarantine. I think that the way in which the program was established, it had to be done quickly. That's the nature of a global pandemic. There is no rule book as such. It also uncovered what ultimately caused Victoria's second COVID-19 wave. Decisions about who worked in the program is less an issue. It is more a matter, and the report finds this. The lack of that very detailed oversight, checking, double checking, triple checking, looking very closely every day at what's occurring in hotel quarantine, that is where uh, the significant breach of hotel quarantine comes from and the resulting transmission. In the report, it stated that Jenny McCarkos, the former health minister, and also Premier Daniel Andrews had nothing to do with hotel quarantine and its failures. It is our intention to accept all the recommendations that Judge Cote has made. We see the Premier saying sorry, but not showing that he's sorry. We see the Premier making an apology, but not being accountable. But Daniel Andrews, the Victorian Premier, confirmed that he would not be stepping down over the report. I am sorry, we are sorry. Uh, our commitment and my commitment uh, as the leader of the government is to learn those lessons. Lincoln Holmes, 6 News. A number of European countries have restricted or completely banned flights from the UK due to a new mutant strain of coronavirus that has plunged parts of Britain into a Christmas lockdown. The Netherlands and Germany have both banned flights from the UK for at least the rest of the year, while Belgium also issued a 24-hour flight ban while also halting train links to Britain. France and Ireland both announced 48-hour bans for precautionary measures. Meanwhile, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced that all non-essential shops in the UK, or, or parts of the UK rather, as well as gyms, cinemas, casinos and hairdressers will have to stay shut or people are limited to meeting one person from another household in an outdoor public space. Johnson said at a press conference that he was taking the actions with a heavy heart, but that the scientific evidence had left him with no other choice. US lawmakers have approved a stimulus deal for a sweeping $900 billion rescue package to deliver much needed relief for small businesses, unemployed Americans and healthcare workers, while also bolstering distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine. CNN reports that the, deal, that the deal includes direct payment checks of up to $600 per adult and child, $300 per week for enhanced unemployment insurance benefits, and $82 billion for education providers like schools and colleges which includes aid to help reopen classrooms safely, as well as $10 billion to help with childcare assistance. In a joint statement on the deal, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said, we're going to crush the virus and put money in the pockets of the American people. The announcement follows weeks of policy disputes between Democrats and Republicans that created an uncertainty over whether lawmakers would reach a stimulus deal before the Christmas break. The tens of thousands of Australians who remain stranded overseas, Christmas will only be a reminder of what they're missing. 
no family, no hope and no certainty. So many were at breaking point and just two days out from Santa's arrival back home, final preparations are underway for a Christmas which takes on a new meaning this year. Connor Forke has this special report. Kelly Burns personifies distress. I wake up and I'm just, I, I panic. I can wake up in the middle of the night and, you know, it's just very restless sleep. Trying to make the best out of each day because I have to keep my mindset going. She is jobless, living alone and in lockdown, but is being separated from her Aussie partner that pains her the most. My partner, it's been... Uh, about 380 days. He's in New South Wales, she's in California. Their long distance relationship has spanned seven years. Kelly is used to not seeing her partner for months on end, but the stresses of COVID and the Australian government's apparent lack of compassion have left her teary and sleepless. There's no update, there's no timeline, there's nothing that we're given that, okay, we're going to bring temporary visa holders back into Australia on this date, or here's your game plan. It's like, we just don't even exist, which is really frustrating. No, 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 we, we, we went through a process with our officials to work out what was the best way to get Good. people home, and it's on commercial flights, going through the hotel quarantine system. Which... Kelly has lodged a request for a travel exemption 23 times. All have been denied. I thought, you know, it's gonna be no problem because We've been together for seven years and this isn't an issue, right? We're going to get accepted. I'll be accepted because I'm immediate family <laughs> and it didn't happen. So do you have any hope of um, being reunited? At this point, I would have to say no. And for so many, the deep ache of missing goes on. 38,000 Australians are stranded overseas this Christmas. Kelly will spend Christmas home alone. She says the threat of loneliness and anxiety this festive season is so real, some have contemplated committing suicide. I mean, I've had dark thoughts. I mean, it's very normal to have feelings of despair if you're separated from the one you love for as long as I've been. A dreary Christmas worldwide. In the UK, 21 million people have been ordered to stay at home. Non-essential businesses have been shut. The Christmas lockdown comes after a new fastest spreading strain of the virus was discovered. It's up to 70% more infectious. A little more than a week ago, it seemed as if Australia had stolen Christmas back from the icy clutches of the COVID Grinch. Cases were low, state borders were crumbling, families reuniting. Then came news of the Northern Beaches Cluster. Christmas plans were thrown into disarray as states imposed border restrictions with just a moment's notice. Denied so much, Christmas will take on a new meaning this year. A time of hope, joy and despair as we stare down the barrel of 2021. And Connor, our 4K, joins us live now. Connor, what will the forecast look like for Christmas? Leo, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas here in Brisbane's King George Square. The facade of City Hall has been lit up and take a look at this spectacular 22 metre Christmas tree behind me. But time now for your all important Christmas Day weather forecast. Across the nation, an assortment of conditions here in Brisbane, it'll be cloudy and humid. Forecast rain will bring a cool change. Sydney, Canberra, Hobart and Darwin could also see on and off storms, thanks to their La Nina weather event. Cloudy but mostly sunny in Melbourne, top of 19 degrees there. Moving around the nation now, and Adelaide and Perth will see a fine and sunny day. Along with Darwin, they're the hottest capital cities in the country on Christmas, with temperatures there expected to reach into the 30s but whatever the weather holds i hope you at home have a very merry christmas there are just two days to go but leo right now it's back to you it all sounds a fair bit better than the uh, rain we're currently experiencing here in melbourne that we've had for a few days now connor f4k live for us tonight thank you
Well, have you ever wondered what life on Mars will look like? Well, wonder no more. These futuristic pictures have been released showing astronauts exploring the merciless planet with high-tech facilities. Project Olympus released the photos, a joint partnership with NASA, who will be building humanity's home away from home. At this stage, NASA hopes to send crews to the moon by 2024 with full Mars missions by 2030. All right, let's bring in political commentator Christian Remmer to discuss some of today's top stories. Christian, good morning to you. Let's kick things off. What's your reaction to this latest cluster in New South Wales? Oh, look, I think it's just, it's, it's an absolute, um, it, it's an absolute kick in the guts, particularly for Queensland uh, tourism operators, because they, they've been at the forefront of these, um, these, these border restrictions. And, and I mean, it was only, it was only like in the last, couple of months that the borders were reopened and um you know being so close to christmas eve i just think this is just adding insult to injury it's just it's it's just rubbing salt in the wounds of a lot of these um tourism operators who otherwise would have had some relief from the from these borders being reopened but um, I, I just think it's 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 a tragedy, and and it's just it, it couldn't happen at the worst time, um, you know, with Christmas just around the corner in a, in a week. Um, it just it's just it it's, it saddens me, but you you know, um, this one thing we've learned from this pandemic is you know there's it's full of surprises and things will pop up, and obviously you, you, it's not going to be. Uh, you, you're never going to have tabs on everyone, everybody. So you, you're going to get those sort of um, oddities and, you know, individuals caught up in w whether doing the wrong thing or, you know, they, they, they're just, you know, in, at the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I really sympathise for um, a, a lot of these, a lot of the businesses that had re relied on a lot of the this interstate tourism, which um, unfortunately has now gone for, done a full 180, and now we're back to where we were, which was uh, a, a hard border uh, with New South Wales. Um, yeah, v very disappointing. Yeah, all right. Changing pace now. And uh, US President Donald Trump, he's continuing to fight those November election results, retweeting a lot of claims about alleged election fraud. But should he concede to Joe Biden? Well, look, I would, I would, I would like to, but I feel like I, I couldn't bring myself to, um, to, to put a, a dead... Uh, clo closure to this when court proceedings. I mean, even even if the chances may not necessarily be likely uh, in Ch in Trump's favour, um, and 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 of and the likelihood of of him uh, coming out on top is is narrowing. Um, I, with court proceedings still underway, I, I think it's just a case of having of 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 um, waiting out the the this process and. Um, Taking, take, oh, naturally, you know, taking um, cases with a grain of salt, which is, you know, critical thinking is very important. But um, there, there's still things that are coming up through a lot of a lot of the legal affidavits that are being presented and accounts that are being put forward. I don't. I. It's probably not the time just yet um, to. Um, call you know call foul as it were and just 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 put a just close the the entire thing completely um so i yeah i i just think we should just wait wait it out just a little little bit longer un, until as much time as we can there, there is a uh, established um conclusion to this entire thing Right, and finally today, a number of Twitter users have been telling other users to put their race in their bio. We've got some images on screen for the viewers at home of these tweets. I'll quickly read one of the threads out. It says, in part, that people should do so, so people can know if you're making an insensitive joke or saying a slur you can't reclaim, and because apparently some people aren't comfortable following white people. What's your reaction? 
Oh, I just think, uh, well, it, first of all, it doesn't surprise me. Um, we've seen me, uh, tech giants go down this route, de go down this route. Um, uh, I, I think it, it mostly boils down to maybe pressure from, uh, you know, activist uh, groups that feel like, uh, and in, they, they feel as if there's an injustice that re requires addressing by these companies and I, they, they feel like they, they, they have something to lose by, by not um, listening to these people. I feel like it's, it's, a, it's trying to appease a, 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 you know, a, a loud minority, but um, no, no, it doesn't surprise me. Um, uh, the, these sorts of things uh, are just happening, you know, they're, they're becoming more common. Uh, I think it's just a waste of of time and thought when you know they they, they could pos they could you know possibly um, spend invest a little more thought into uh, some of the censorship that we've seen, um, particularly in 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 the way of conservatives that you know um, are posting content that contradict the um, the algorithm um of of these of these platforms and uh, which which i i just think is just blatant by i mean they're a private company they're they're entitled uh to make their own uh dis decision their own business decisions but uh when, when when you're dealing with a a a public forum that that accommodates um most m most of society they, they they have a duty to um, to to pr provide uh, a platform that doesn't um, re that doesn't reduce the 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 I ideological um, diversity of opinions that are on on that are that are inhabit their platform, and I just think there's a line that, uh, that there's a line that can be crossed, and I feel like. Uh, that line is is very much, um, very much closing in. Uh, I, this stuff it doesn't surprise me. Uh, it's it, it's sad that it's a priority. Um, I think it's just div divisive identity politics. But um, uh, yeah, yeah, it does. It's not something that I I put thought in because I've seen it. You know, I have uh, seen it elsewhere. Um, uh, I just think it's a, it's a waste of time, and they should they should focus on other areas of of, of their business. So yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Right, Christian Remmer, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts. Talk soon, and of course, have a merry Christmas. Uh, thank you. Um, great to be here. All right, finally today, just a quick programming note, 6 News will not be airing this Sunday as we're all on a Christmas break. I can tell you personally that uh, I haven't had a break in a long time, but we will still be posting and uploading every single day, so make sure you've followed and subscribed to us to see all that. That is 6 News for this Wednesday morning. You can stay up to date once again on online social pages. Just search 6 News Day to find us. I'm Leonardo Pugliese. Thanks for your company. Have a Merry Christmas. <laughs>